guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today I got commissioned to do a really cool piece. A lot of you guys actually been asking for this and because I finally got commissioned for it, I thought I'd share it with all of you guys. So today I'm gonna show you guys how I made Falcor from the Never Ending Story. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing I'm gonna work on to make our Falcor is going to be the clay pieces. So I'm gonna start on the head first and then we'll move on to making the legs. And so like normal, I have a glass container to use as the base, and then I have a lump of tin foil that I roughly shaped into the shape of a head. It's more of a cone shape, but it'll still work. So I'm gonna use this, and I'm gonna start covering it in a nice thick layer of clay. And like always, I'm using original Sculpey clay. Once I have the tin foil completely covered in clay, I'm going to start adding clay in different spots to help refine the shape. So I'm adding a lot of clay to the top of the head because Falcor has a very large brim for his forehead. It kind of lifts up quite a bit, so I'm just going to start building up a lot of clay there, and then probably a little bit at the end of the snout to make the shape of his nose. After that, I need to add some eyes to the piece, so I'm going to take two small balls of clay and I'm going to smush them into the face where I want the eyes to go. After that, I'm going to take strips of clay and start building up the eyelids around them and start working on the expression that the eyes are going to have. After finishing the eyes, I realized I needed to add even more clay to the forehead and the sides of the face. It just didn't have the right shape. It kind of looked like it was caving in a bit. So I'm going to add some clay there and start blending everything together. Okay, I'm finally happy with the shape of the head, so now we can move on to making the mouth. So I'm going to take a strip of clay and I'm going to lay it across the face, make sure it's in a good position, and start blending it in. I'm also going to be using my tools to add a little bit of texture to the face, so I'm just going to be kind of dotting my tool all over the face to create a nice texture. Okay, now for the nose, this took me a little longer than I thought it would because honestly I thought the nose looked really simple, so I was just going to throw it on real quick, but after looking at what I did and comparing it to pictures, I realized it was a lot more complicated, and it took me a few tries adjusting the clay to get the right shape. So it did take me a little bit longer to get this nose shape than normal. But in the end, I ended up getting a really decent shape for it, and I'm pretty happy with it. Now this was one of those pieces where I really needed to use my references for it because his face looks actually kind of like it would be easy to make, but it really isn't. If you have just the slightest thing off on his face, it just doesn't look the same. So I did have to go back and adjust the eyes to get him to close just a little bit because he looked kind of bug-eyed. Um, and I had to adjust a few other things like changing the nose multiple times. So if you're working on a piece that is a certain character, I would recommend recommend getting reference pictures and just double checking on them in each step that you're doing. But anyways, I'm really happy with how the face is and I'm going to start moving on to making the feet for Falcor. Okay, so to make Falcor's feet, I needed to make a little wire frame, so this is basically just two pieces of wire. They're each bent into a, like a U shape and one is a little wider than the other. That way I could wrap them together and it looks like some spread toes. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add some claws to our feet. So I'm going to take a little bit of clay and I'm going to put it at the end of each wire. I'm then going to shape it a little bit so it has a slight point to it. After this, I'm going to bake this in the oven for about 20 minutes so the claws are nice and hard and I don't have to worry about bumping them. And the oven temp for this is going to be 275. After that's done baking and it's cooled, I'm going to start working on the bottom of the feet. So I'm going to start adding some balls of clay to one side of the wire and I'm going to lay them out to look like paw pads. I'm then going to blend these together and then I'm going to put these in the oven again at 275 Fahrenheit for probably another 20 or 30 minutes, a little bit longer because it's a little thicker. Now again, the reason I'm doing these little pre-bakes in between certain steps is just to make it a lot easier and you don't have to worry about bumping things. So once you're done with the bottom of the foot, it's easier to hold the piece while you're working on the top of the foot. So again, this is out of the oven and it's cooled and we're going to start adding clay to the tops of the feet and we're going to blend them together and start shaping them. Now, Falcor's feet were actually kind of hard to get good reference of. Most of the Googled images that I searched, they mainly focused on showing off his face, and you just kind of got like a side view of his feet every now and again. So I just kind of threw those pictures together and kind of made a good example of what they should look like in full view. 
But anyways, I'm really happy with how they came out, and I'm going to put these along with the face in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 45, maybe 55 minutes. Some of the clay is pretty thick. Once all my clay was out of the oven and is cooled, I can finally work on the painting. So I'm going to primer the face and the feet with a nice off-white pink color, and then I'm going to start adding some different shades to lighten or brighten up the face. For the nose, I wanted to make it look kind of dark in there, so I kind of just put a bunch of black paint in it, and then I wiped away the extra paint that kind of came out of the nostrils. So it was like black snot that I wiped away. <laughs> it's kind of gross if you think about it. After I was pretty happy with how the face looked, I'm going to move on to doing the eyes. I figured these would be best to do last, that way I didn't have to worry about bumping them or getting paint on them and having to redo them over and over again. So I'm using a brown paint for the iris, I'm going to let this dry and do a few different coats of it to try and brighten it up, and then I'm going to do some black for the pupil and then add some white highlights to make it look like his eyes are reflective. And that's pretty much all the painting for the face. Now moving on to painting the feet. Again, I primered them a pink color ahead of time and then I'm gonna start using some different colors to add highlights and lowlights. After I like the color of the feet, I'm gonna move on to finishing the claws. So the little skin that goes around the claw, I'm doing a nice gray color, and then I'm gonna lighten that gray color, almost getting it white. I don't want it completely white, but I'm gonna lighten that gray color, and then I'm gonna paint the nails with it. So that's pretty much all the painting for the face and the feet. So I'm gonna let everything dry, and then I'm going to apply a thin layer of resin over everything to help protect the paint. So these are gonna to have to dry overnight. But while that's drying, we can work on the sewing for the body. Okay guys, this is the pattern that I drew out to make Falcor's body. The pattern that I have is cut into two different pieces. I've got the front and the back. Now a lot of people have asked me, like, why do you leave the neck piece disconnected from the body? Can you actually just leave it one solid piece? And that is correct. You can leave your pattern one solid piece. Now what I like to do with my larger patterns, and this is one of them, is I usually break them in half like this because when I lay out my pattern on my fabric, if you have it into two separate pieces, sometimes you don't waste as much fabric because if I had this one solid piece laid out on a piece of fabric, I would be wasting a good chunk of fabric in between the legs and the neck and a lot of it just will be too small to use, but it's big enough where it is a big waist. So I usually break up my pattern into multiple pieces so that I can get the pieces close as possible together on the fabric before I cut them out so I have as least amount of waist as possible. And then the legs are separated because I need those to make the inner parts of the legs. And then of course this is going to be the belly piece and then I'm also going to use it to make the top of the body. So the fabric pieces I have are the front of the body, I've got a left and a right. The back of the body, I've got a left and a right for that too. And then I've got the belly piece and the inside parts of the legs. Now before I start putting the body together, I need one more type of fabric to add a little bit of extra detail to it. So this fabric is a nice sequence fabric that's actually reversible. So the one side that I'm going to mainly be using is this kind of pearlescent, and then the other side is this white. So I'm going to be using this to make the scaling on Falcor's back and a little bit on his sides. So I'm going to cut out a strip for his back. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of fur detail to this, so I'm going to cut a line right down the middle of it, and then I'm going to sew a strip of white fabric down this. By the way, this fabric is super messy to cut. Sequence got everywhere. So keep that in mind if you want to buy this to sew. And then to cut the sides, I used the same pattern that we used to cut all the body pieces out. And then I just kind of drew where I wanted the scales to be. I cut this out, I traced it onto all the fabric pieces, and then I cut those out as well. I then used that same pattern to make the scale piece that will fit right inside, just like a puzzle. So I'm going to sew all of these into place. 
After that, we can start finally putting all the body pieces together. So I'm gonna start by sewing the front piece and the back piece together at the hip. Now normally when I do my sewing, I sew the belly piece on first and I leave the back open so that you can stuff and close it up. But because I'm using the sequence, I thought it'd be a little bit difficult to get a good seam line. So I'm actually going to take our back piece and I'm gonna sew the two body pieces to that. And then to close up the piece later, I'm going to use the belly piece and sew that into place. So it's a lot easier to hide the seams in the furry fabric than it is next to all the scales. And then the last little bit of sewing for the body until we put everything together, I need to sew the fronts of all the legs. So I'm going to take the inside parts of the legs and the main body and I'm going to put them together and I'm just going to sew right down the front of each leg. Oh, one last thing, we need to make some ears real fast. So I just cut out a basic little shape, kind of looks like a little floppy dog ear because it is, and I made four of these. I'm going to take two of them and sandwich them together, sew all the way around, and flip it right side out. I'm going to do that to the other two as well. You won't need to stuff these, you could if you want, but I don't want them to be puffy, I want them to lay kind of flat. Okay, we can finally put everything together. Now I made a basic little wire frame for this and I'm going to attach the legs to the wire frame. The only thing different with this wire frame and most of the ones I used, I reinforced the front wire where the neck is in the front legs because his head's gonna be kind of heavy and I wanted to make sure he could actually stand up. So I'm gonna connect all the legs to the wire and then we can start adding the fabric to the body. So I'm gonna lay our wire frame onto the fabric body and I'm gonna use a combination of hot glue and E6000 glue to attach the fur all the way around the base of the hands and feet. After we have all the fabric glued into place around the hands and feet, I'm gonna move on to closing up the back of each leg and then I'm gonna stuff each leg. After the legs are done, we're gonna add the head to the wire frame and we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the feet. We're gonna glue the fabric all the way around the neck. We're gonna also be taking the belly piece now and we're going to glue that to the bottom of the neck. Now we just need to sew the belly piece into place and stuff the rest of the body. And then lastly, I need to add the ears to the face along with a little bit of fur detail and scale work on the top of the head. Okay guys, and that's how I did Falcor from The Never Ending Story. I had so much fun with him and I can't wait to ship him off to his new home. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!